In today's video we're going to be talking about the shoulder joint. So it's known as a diarthrosis joint or a synovial ball and socket joint, which basically means that it allows for free movement. In fact, the shoulder joint is one of the most mobile joints in the whole body and it involves the articulation of the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Now, the glenoid cavity of the scapula is quite shallow so it's made deeper with something known as a glenoid labrum which is basically like a ring of fibrous tissue and this surrounds the glenoid cavity so what this does is when the head of the humerus attaches it basically gives about 45 millimeters of space. So the components of the shoulder joint consist of the joint capsule and bursae. So the joint capsule is very loose and the long head of the biceps brachy muscle will pass through the joint capsule. And uh, the bursae are small fluid filled sacs which are located around the capsule and their purpose is to improve mobility and prevent friction. So there's five different types of bursae within the shoulder joint. There's the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, which is between the joint capsule and the deltoid muscle. We have the subacromial bursa, which is between the joint capsule and the acromion. The subcoracoid bursa, which is between the joint capsule and the coracoid process. The coracobrachial bursa, which is between the subscapularis muscle and the tendon of coracobrachialis muscle. And the subscapular bursa, which is between the joint capsule and the tendon of subscapularis muscle. The primary stabilizers of the shoulder involve the biceps brachy muscle and, and the muscles of the rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff muscles are a group of muscles including the supraspinatus muscle, infraspinatus muscle, teres minor muscle and the subscapularis muscle. The ligaments involved in the shoulder joint include the superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligament. We also have the coracohumeral ligament the transverse humeral ligament and the coracoacromial ligament. The blood supply to the shoulder joint involves the branches of the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries, the suprascapular artery and the scapular circumflex artery. And the shoulder joint is innervated by the suprascapular nerve, the axillary nerve and the lateral pectoral nerve. Lastly, just to end the video, we're going to talk about some movements of the shoulders when you're exercising. So if you can see this exercise here, the process or the action which the shoulder is undergoing is known as abduction. And the specific shoulder muscles which are being worked are the deltoid muscles and the supraspinatus muscles. This movement which you can see here is known as flexion and the muscles which are being worked are the anterior deltoids the upper pectoralis major muscle and the coracobrachialis muscle. Also, when performing certain actions like throwing a ball, for example, um, it changes the position of the shoulder joint. So at the beginning of the throw, which you can see here, we have external rotation of the shoulder joint. And then as you continue to throw the ball and your arm goes further forward, we have this internal rotation, which you can see here. So that's all I really want to discuss in today's video. If you'd like to see more videos like this regarding other joints or other parts of the body, leave a comment in the comment section below and thank you for watching.